come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and this is yet a glorious episode. We're recording on October 30th, 2015. Tomorrow's Halloween, and we are going to discuss all about live-action Disney films. But first, let me introduce to you two of the members of the Flack Pack here. Uh, first up is Matt Brunet, also known as Animat. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? And today I'm feeling pretty well, considering that I just hit 35,000 subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> And the missus next to him is Amelia Ray, also known as Mia. Hi. I think she's happy that you that you just called that you just said that she is the missus next to me. Probably. Probably. <laughs> With that being the case. With that being the case, we are here to discuss our, like, kind of retrospective on Disney live action films. Since last time we talked about animated films, because this is Disney month after all, and we're celebrating because of Matt's birthday, too. And now we're celebrating because he hit 35,000 subscribers on YouTube! Bonus! <laughs> Bonus, we're celebrating here. We're talking about more Disney. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness gracious. So, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be like last time. Matt, that face you did just now reminds me of like that the one the I think it was the oldest sister from Hocus Pocus, like that one. Oh, you know, the way. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sisters. <coughs> Sister. <laughs> so it's not gonna be like last time. We're not gonna do like memories and stuff like that because we haven't we haven't per se grew up on Disney live action films because as kids we watched the animated ones so. As respective teenagers slash adults, we are going to talk about the live action ones as we uh, go on here. So let's start off with uh, a discussion about the trends of Disney live action films then versus now. Like comparing what Disney has made when it comes to live action films. I feel like back then they were kind of more focused on making them like super like family friendly like really happy and fun and goofy and now i don't know somehow i feel like they got a little darker now a little less fun and goofy and happy i don't know well it's actually very interesting because um there there is a very um well put out distinction between all of them anywhere between the 40s and the 60s they were pretty much the period when walt disney was in charge Oh, excuse me. So a lot of them are mostly about, like, they're more of a whimsical aspect. Those are the ones where Walt Disney had more of his input into it. Exactly. Especially a, a lot of his, high, a lot of the highlights there uh, would include stuff like uh, Mary, pa Mary Poppins, The Parent Trap. Uh, uh, there may be some that get more serious, like Old Yeller and 20,000 Leagues mm -hmm. Under the Sea. Um, but, and sometimes there might be a few that can mix with animation, again, with Mary Poppins and also right. Song of the South. We'll discuss that later. Um, but then suddenly in the 70s, that's when the, like, the entire Walt Disney Company was at their lowest point, considering that they were pretty much making movies that they want, they want to do something that would be what Walt would have made. Kind of like those what if. Walt Disney was still alive, they they were pretty much still lost. It, like they come up with some of the weirdest ones during that time, but there were still a few highlights that still managed to uh, be more be as memorable. Like uh, we still like we still got the Love Bug, we got Bed Knobs and Bro uh, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, we got Pete's mm -hmm. Dragon, and all those films. The '80s suddenly they got into a much more darker turn. That's when they decided to try a new direction and be more dark with their stuff. Uh, some examples would include The Water in the Woods and um, also Something Wicked This Way Comes. Yeah. And, there was all and then there was also, um, uh, the, like even in their animated films, like they tried to do something dark with The Black Cauldron. 
And also, but during the late 80s, that's when they also decided to tap into the more adult films. And instead of putting in the Disney logo, they would bring in Touchstone. Right. That's why a lot of them, that's why, like, um, that actually helped the company by making more hits with more adult stuff without really going out and say that they are Right, Disney. and I was going to say that <clears throat> most of these uh, do have, like, dis distributions through different divisions, like Touchstone, for example, and we're kind of not talking about Touchstone Pictures because that's a totally different topic. Because we're talking about, yeah. talk about the films well, that Disney directly released under their label. Yeah. This trend would be continuing on like throughout the 90s and then until uh, until about the 2000s that's when they were starting to go into the more big budget stuff and one of their breakthrough movies was pirates in the caribbean curse of the yes. black pearl that's when they started uh getting the big bucks by making big budget movies and then the tradition pretty much continued on from there making bigger movies and like doing stuff that's pretty much bigger and better and now, and then we've reached to the point now where pretty much their movies are sectored into different parts. Now we actually got Star mm -hmm. Wars. Uh, they're also they're also responsible for helping out with the Marvel movies. That uh, now they're also doing mostly these live action reboots where they take the animated classics and then they would take them into a different spin. Case in point, uh, Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, Maleficent and uh, the 2015 Cinderella. And then, like, on the side, they would do some other stuff as well. Like, they don't really stick into franchises, but they, they would occasionally do different things with, um, uh, like, like, they would try to do, like, different live-action films, whether they be family comedies or, like, uh, more serious works. Uh, like, a fan, like, a recent family comedy... Like, sometimes they're not the greatest, like, uh, Alexander and the Not-So-Good, Horribly, Terribly, Bad Day, That's As Bad As a Movie. Or, um, a, re a recent example, technically this does count, would be, like, a, for a more dramatic role, would be Bridge of Spies. Uh... I don't... It's technically, because that's technically a DreamWorks film, but they're oh, associated, yes. like... As of now, they are associated with Disney. That was, it's like it's still it's uh, technically counts. In I was looking realm. at that earlier. I was. That's kind of. I know it's stretching. stretching you're kind it. of stretching oh, it, bit, kiddo. Because I think. Hold on. Give me a second here. What's the? No, because it's it's DreamWorks, and as of now, they're associated with Disney. Oh, uh, or oh, does it oh. work? Where? Why is it not listed? Okay, okay, okay. Production okay. companies, DreamWorks Studios, oh, Touchstone. Ah, uh, Touchstone. That's my catch. That's the Touchstone. catch. That's Touchstone. Yeah. See, that's the thing, and it's, it's just Touchstone is just a distribution label under Walt Disney, which is interesting enough for another discussion. Cause this does look dark. Yeah, Jesus. that's for. Yeah. Yeah. It's highly praised, but like this is one of the. Steven Spielberg's more dark oh, yeah. films, but like, in the category of like Saving Pri Private Ryan and Shin oh jeez, right, yeah, it's... yeah, I stay away from those movies. Yeah. So it's t it's tentatively <laughs> Touchstone, but we're talking about stuff that's directly released by Walt Disney with the Walt Disney logo, bam. With the when you wish yes, upon with star. that kind of logo. So, not Touchstone, not Marvel, we're not talking about Star Wars, we're not talking about any of that, we're just talking about the straight up with Disney films. Um, the trend I've noticed between the, actually no, it's not between old and new, but it's like no matter what Disney does, they always, always adapt from a book. No matter what film it is, they always adapt from, it's based on a book. If it's based on a book, it's probably a Disney film. Sorry, you cut out a bit. Who does? Disney. Like, they would mostly, um, like, most of the time, especially during the earlier days, uh, like, during the times of Walt Disney himself, they would always adapt a book. I see. Yeah, so, it's usually what it is. Which it is, which it is definitely true, and it even counts with their animated films. 
Like, the only one Here that I can think of that out. doesn't count on that is uh, Fantasia. Am I cutting off, or is Mike cutting off? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Oh my god, this is bad. Am I cutting off? Am, am I having problems? You were, and now Mike is, and... I can't hear him at all now. Yeah, because... Okay. Just for okay. long. <laughs> <laughs> Mike! Expect, expect those little buffers in between, because sometimes my... Your camera's okay. completely frozen. Oh, there it goes. A little bit. Right As now. I was saying, if you didn't catch that, was that it is true, especially in the early days of Walt Disney, that um, all their movies are pretty much... like mo or At least most of their movies were pretty <clears> much adapted... <throat> From a book like the only one that i could think of that wasn't was pretty much fantasia right. exactly mm -hmm. so and uh, they've started doing live action uh, mostly was uh the 50s they started doing a lot mm -hmm. of those in the 50s like i think the first one they ever done was treasure island i believe so yes. that was mostly because uh the, like the 50s were pretty much a time when Walt Disney finally recuperated his studio back after the major success of Cinderella, and his interests, like, his interests really weren't as much into animation. Like, he, he's still very mm -hmm. keen on it, but it's just, like, the, like, he doesn't really want to get into it as much as he did before, from, like, sin, like from the days of Snow White, so he put his interests elsewhere in other projects, like live-action films and also uh, making his theme park. Right. Right, right. Um. Actually, I was going through this list here. All I can I can't see any full fully live action films for the forties. All I can see yes. is hybrids. Yes, it's no. it's the fifties. The fifties no. were the the start of the live action. Yeah, that's when they. Truly yep, began. it's actually been like fifty years since they have been making live action films. So. Sixty actually. Crap, that's right. I suck at math, so shut up. Um. Nah, you don't suck at math. It's just freaking time is going too fast. God damn it. Um, but yeah, I had to. I did some little, little bit of research, sort of, where I actually watched a classic one from uh, the fifties. I actually got around to watch Old Yeller. I, I mean, um, for those of you who don't know what Old Yeller is, it is the story. I'll tell you what it is. It's a depressing. It as is. Hell. It is a depressing film. Yeah. yeah. Just that thing, okay? I don't watch movies where the dog dies. Ever. Never. And that's the most infamous is, one where... It is the, the most dog, infamous. No. Whenever, like, Mike or Morgan wants to show me a movie, it's like, okay, hold yes. on a second. Go on doesthedogdie.com. I always do that. I'm like, yes, if the dog, dog dies, yes, if the animals dog get dog. hurt, I'm not watching it. Okay? Well, yeah, and I, I totally forgot about that when I was like, what? watch and I was like it's classics like you know old yeller and all that shit and I was like crap that's right she doesn't like that stuff yeah that's like old yeller's like the classic beyond classic when it comes to depressing dog stories like it's a it's about a boy and a dog and it's actually really good in, uh, until the dog gets rabies and depressing dog stories has a genre of its own and apparently there's a sequel to it yes Savage Sam <laughs> Yes, there is. Really? It's with his son. Old Yeller's son. I have not seen that. I know Devin uh, told me that, and I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah it's like a lot of based on books. There's actually a couple, like, uh, what are they called? Nature documentaries in here, too, actually. Yes. Yeah, I, was, I saw those. Yeah, they're those. called Disney Nature. No, 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 those are today's Ooh, that's ones. right. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong label. Beforehand, when Walt Disney wanted to experiment with a lot of stuff, he decided to make nature documentaries called True Life Adventures. Funny enough, that's where that's, a lot of his uh, authors okay, come okay, from. Okay, that's what it was. Not. I was looking at the wrong one. Oh. Yep, it's True Life Adventures. They, like, he began with True yep, Life that's Adventures, what it was, yep. like, and he was finding more success with those. It's only up until recently with Disney Nature when they decided to continue that tradition of making mm -hmm. nature documentaries and having, like, celebrities like Tim Allen to do... Oh, this uh, is where the lemming thing came from, isn't it? Yeah, like lemmings, wild yeah. cats, chimpanzee. 
Oh yeah, like the, I I think they do one every year, and they always release them on yeah. Earth Day. Oh. There was I was like looking through the list of all these di live action Disney films, and just one that came upon me. I was like, I wanted to watch it so bad, but I couldn't find a copy. But it's called The Legend of Lobo. Legend you and your nature talk, man. No. <laughs> you and your nature like. No, it was. This is actually a story of um. It's weird because I was. The, the, Oh, it's wolves, of course. Well, obviously. Because I love oh. my wolves. Because there are wolves in it, and wolves are awesome. Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, it's weird because this is a movie. It's not a nature documentary, mind you. It's a actual film where it's the story is told through a wolf's point of view. So the dog, or the wolf, is like narrating to himself as he sees life unfolds. Is this like think... Cinema Royale, the documentary? Like, from Mike's standpoint? <laughs> well, actually, that's that's what they all are. That's what all Disney nature documentaries are. Both True Life Adventures and, um, and uh, well, the Disney nature. They're all, like, they're all kind of telling the story of the animal that's, like, like showing their adventure. Yeah. Oh. So this one's... It's like, it's like they kind of make stories out of what's going on on screen. It wasn't labeled as a true life adventure, though. It was just labeled as a live action one. Which is weird. Mm. But there's also, like, trends of both, like, then and now versus, um, like, old versus new, because occasionally Disney would remake their classics sometimes. Oh, yeah. Because you got the parent traps, you got your Freaky Fridays, and you got your... A lot of them are, like, funny enough, I just noticed that a lot of them are around, like, the 2000s or 80s and stuff like that. Because, like, it, it, it's funny to mention because, like, they, they've done a lot of remakes, but they're rather mixed. There are some that can work, like, uh, like I, I know that Freaky Friday and Parent Trap arguably stand out even more than the uh -huh. original. Or is, does Freaky Friday yep. count as a, yep. as a remake? Yep. Yeah, okay, good. Um, but then, like, you got Herbie, uh, like, Herbie's Fully Loaded, which technically is it's, a reboot, but, like, it did nothing to the love yeah. bug. Like, like, I think a lot of people just rejected it and just stick with the love bug, especially after the madness of Lindsay yeah. Lohan. Yeah, a lot of those... Oh, is that... I never actually fully understood what happened with that. Yeah, that's a, that's another big franchise that's kind kind of interesting. It was Herbie. Like back then, Herbie was like the shit. The love bug. I mean, I was I was like reading. I was like, that's got a whole franchise. I mean, it's got like. Oh yeah. Because I was trying to, I've seen like the TV movie in '97 with Bruce Campbell, and then I seen the Lindsay Lohan film, which. Hmm. I mean, my God, my God, Lindsay Lohan. And it's funny because in the film, here's a fun fact for you: Disney had to reduce her breast sizes to to two two sizes because they're too big for families. So to make a family, what? <laughs> Me if I become an actress? Bas yeah, basically Disney had to reduce. Oh, basically, Disney had to digitally reduce her breast sizes to two sizes smaller. Because they're that big, and Disney didn't want a female character with. I can argue with any of their animated ones, but. <laughs> Fun fact. Um. But yeah, it's just it's always interesting to look back at Disney and see how they've grown over the years. Um, like check out the class. Oh yeah. What is that noise? Pencil. Oh. Scraping my pen. Close. It's, it's loud. Sorry. The microphone's like right up there for a second. So, uh, check out the classics if you can. You know, go back. Go back to the early years and check them out. They, like, they're worth checking out to see what, how it does it grow over the years. And there's some stuff now you can watch. Even like, you know, in the 90s and 80s. That's actually a good, like, even 2000s. It's really... A good era, but the other thing that we didn't we kind of talked about in the last one, kind of not, I don't remember. But uh, they also ventured with uh, 
hybrids. They also try to do like live action with uh, animation, which are is very unique for Disney to do that. Like it was like wow, they actually put animation with the live action. It looks. Oh yeah, those always really fascinated me because I'd really love to somehow see how they did that. I think how do they touched do that? Touch, yeah, I think they touched upon it. I think we have touched upon it a little bit when I was discussing about the three yep, caballeros. Yep, that was the one. But I don't think we discussed about like the other, uh, like the right. other stuff, because well, like Disney, like there have been movies that do that, uh, but like D- Disney was the one that when they do it, it's just, like, that is true innovation. Mm-hmm. Case in point, like, it, the, the hybrid animation is pretty much the reason why people would remember Song of the South. Yes. It's the, it's the true highlight, and it's the true beauty of the movie. Everything else was just pretty dull and dumb. Uh, but then, also, like, one, but like one of the best examples is pretty much Who Framed mm-hmm. Roger Rabbit. That's yes, when everything... Definitely became so right even to the point that they had to bring in a master animator richard williams to be in charge of uh, all the animation to it so it, it, it was... definitely was fa- so like um it, it definitely is fascinating to see how they blend it in um there was uh, another example i just realized right now oh well, a few examples <laughs> i just realized because there was also mary poppins there was pete's dragons and then there was uh, bed knobs and broomstick those those are several examples, also that would mix uh, hand drawn animation with, uh, care with uh, like live live mm-hmm. action. Or and that's I what I mean. Like, yeah. how did they do that? Like, what I mean, like, like actually put the animation on the live action. Like back then, they didn't have digital stuff. How do, you know? Like, did they just? Like, well, they would have like a film reel and get like, like make sure get frame by frame. They see a picture and like they would, you know, flip it over. But like that's a lot of mm-hmm. live action frames, though. Oh yeah, it's oh, crazy. Wow, that's why those fascinating. It takes so a lot much. of time and effort. And mm-hmm. there's one from the '80s that I would like to mention because I'm the '80s man, of course, on the podcastio. Oh, well, of course. Of course, I uh, Tron. Yes. Tron, which is I was watching it, and I have to rewatch it because. I and fell asleep. Asleep. Same to you. It's it's <laughs> different because here's the thing with me, I've seen the sequel first, I've seen Tron Legacy first, so I was like into that whole atmosphere that Tron Legacy did. But then I was like, wait a minute, it's a hybrid. Is like wait wait wait. So I had to go back and watch the original. And wow, there's a stark difference between those two films. Oh my god. Because yeah, because keep in mind, this was like, like Tron is like. Oh, Tron is like this early 80s film. You could tell it's early 80s because the animation is so early 80s. Because you got like early CGI before Pixar. Way before Pixar. And it looks so like clunky and like very like weird looking. But then you see the live action portions where they're like in the animation. Like this is not like the typical you know animation on live action. It's like the, you have the live action actors uh, in the environment of animation where because it's set in this virtual mm-hmm. world inside a computer it's different to see all the colors and all the looks of it back in the day and it was like really weird looking at it now it's a true innovator and it's kind of it is true that it is kind of weird uh, to see uh, the special effects now considering that um, thir- like, th- like we're talking about a thirty-five-year-old movie, so definitely it is kind of dated with the technology. But still, it definitely is an innovation, considering that no, well, excuse me, no one has ever done such, like, to to use this much CG onto a film and really give it this amazing uh-huh. effect. Uh, like it's mostly. Like, this movie is mostly about feeling the environment Mm -hmm. around you to feel that you're in the virtual world during a time period when computers, like, just the basic core idea of the computers is just pretty much new. And that, like, having this fear that, like, this pretty much, this, this is pretty much the new evolution of how robots 
would be taking over the world. Yeah, I just thought that was like interesting because definitely the early '80s was all about you know just the the early years of computers and watching the film, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I thought that was like interesting to see that now, and and of course I just realized that it's rare for Disney to actually do like a sequel to an older film like such as Tron Legacy because that was like pfft, thirty years in the making. Look at some. I'm looking at some photos of the original. It looks awesome, it actually. It looks. Oh yeah. It, it, oh, it, sure. it like it looks like amazing. Like, but I just thought that, I don't know. I never got all the way through it because I was like laying in bed watching it. So it's not really a good recommendation to lay in bed and watch a movie because you fall asleep. But regardless of what I did, what from what I looked at it, I was like, my goodness, it's amazing. <laughs> I want to. I want to be yes. in that world. Like I want to sleep exactly, in it or something. I want to sleep oh, in it. Oh man, the <laughs> colors and just the atmosphere. And, oh but, yeah. Well, and it's weird looking at the costumes too. They wore. It was like this clunky, you know, helmets. You got the clunky like suits, and they, it was like neon kind of looking. It was like wow, mm -hmm. wow. Although funny the enough, future. those costumes. Although funny enough, like. It's only with those effects that uh, the costumes make sense, that they look good. Have you ever seen it without the effects, like just a photograph of, I I the, of the costumes? They look, it's like, they look yeah, weird. Yeah, I think I have. They look simplistic. They look, the... it, it, it looks like something to prepare yourself to become a motion yes, capture character. Yes, mostly. And I, I think for the longest time now, before the sequel even came out, there was a, there was a person known as the Tron Guy. Yes. yes, he was one. Of, I remember. I think he was one of the early yes, YouTube like celebrities. Yes, one of the viral hits back in the day. I remember that. And then I just thought that'd be thought that was interesting. Cause I think after that there was like nothing else for hybrids after Tron, actually. To be honest, oh, except for uh... James and Giant Peach. Well, that's kind of stretching. It is. It, it is because... kind of stretching it, but they do label it as a hybrid. Because, well, like, the thing is, I, I'm not 100% sure if that would count, because, yes, though, like, there is live action, there is stop motion, but you don't really see them together. Exactly. It's been a while since I saw uh, that. They that also labeled Fantasia 2000. No, that one, no. <laughs> Again, no, that one, I, well, uh, well, actually, I don't know, there is that, there are maybe one or two scenes when Mickey Mouse would come out and interact with uh, the special guests. Yes. Oh, and uh, actually, Enchanted is another one. Uh, no. Maybe. Uh, that's strange. See, I think what they're referring to, what, see, I think what they're referring to is it's a film that contains both live action and animation. They're not saying, oh, it maybe. connects. Oh, not necessarily. They're not, they're like they're like yeah. oh they're. They're in the film, but they're not actually connecting together. Because, like, I don't want to say... I don't want to say a hybrid is, like, both of those things. Because, like, a hybrid... It's hybrid. Like, I don't know. It has to be... They have to be things of their own. Because you got to work so hard to do the... You know, yeah, the animation like and the action together. Yeah, yeah they're like very different. Yeah, like, a hybrid movie would pretty much be something like... Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Like, movies like Enchanted and Fantasia 2000, they would be considered, like, animate, an animated film with live-action exactly. bits. Or a, a live-action film with so, animated So, like, WALL-E, for example, is a... Oh my god, that is true. That is an animated film oh. with a bit of live-action um... bits, actually. And even, the, even with that, that's just, like, from the video uh -huh. Um, that movie. But I also see, I also <laughs> see this film, and it's G Force. Oh really? Yes. G Force. That was dumb. Yes, they actually call that a hybrid film and a Jerry Bruckheimer projection kind of thing. Jerry, but oh my God, that's that counts as a. It. But the people that brought you Pirates of the Caribbean. 
comes secret age. Yeah, because everybody wants this nation of James Bond and frickin' Ham Taro. <laughs> yeah. That was so dumb. Like, even when I was younger, I didn't really understand the difference between a good and a bad movie. I was just looking at it, I was like, this looks so dumb. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Recent years, what have we got? Uh, nothing for this decade, actually, for hybrids. I'm noticing. Uh, well, technically... Technically, all of them would Chip would marks. actually count. It's just that they're used as CG effects. True, true, true. Is that's when finally the line is hmm? just crossed. It's a, like we don't have one that's legit animation. Right. Um. But yeah, it's just that that's what makes Disney truly unique. Because no, there's some other companies that do it, but Disney is the one that's mastered it over the years. Yeah. Because no other company does it better than uh, Disney. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, it's like try. It's like, like if you like, you'd be too foolish to even exactly. Try. You, know, you can't compete, Disney. Come on. Mike, when do I talk about Into the Woods? Actually, you could do that right now. Actually. Yes. Uh, the little the little script that I made. Okay, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do something relevant. I'm gonna be special this time. Into the Woods. Have you both seen it? Eh, par parts eh. of it. Not really interested. Aw, oh, okay. Well, I first saw it in music class last year. When it first came out, like I saw like ads on it for Tumblr, I kind of thought it was like the one that got away. I felt like everybody kind of ignored it quite a bit, you know? But yeah. at the time, I didn't know that it was an adaptation from a musical, so I didn't really know what it was all about. And then we all got into the music room and we watched it, as soon as it started, I was, like, totally drawn in by it. And again, I had not seen the original musical before, but as soon as they started singing, I was like, whoa. I thought it was incredible. And, like, what's funny is that every single thought, train of thought I had afterwards, it was in song format. <laughs> I couldn't stop thinking in song. Ah, crap, your mind became an opera. <laughs> My mind turned into an opera. Like, I was thinking about stuff from my fantasy novel that was in early development at the time. And I was, like, thinking about it as a musical. <laughs> and what really got me was the whole fairy tale thing. I'm such a sucker for fairy tales. Mm. But they really kept the original fairy tales. And I love how they didn't sugarcoat it. Like, they had the... Like, they didn't really make it, like, dreams come true. Like, Cinderella. They had it, like... They had the crows, like, peck out. The, the birds like peck out the sister's oh eyes. God. They had, uh, they had the princess prince get the world out of the tower. Light thorns. What? I just realized something. I had a, I had, I had like this sudden thing. Into the woods. Wait. Answer to Shrek. <laughs> Into the woods is what? Is Disney's answer to Shrek? Oh my! Oh. Uh, 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 Does that uh, make sense? Oh my God! You just blew her mind. <laughs> like we we just need one of the like the only difference is that one of the characters like we don't have a Prince Charm uh, going. Somebody once told me the world has got a. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> What's here right now? Um. <laughs> yeah, it really got me thinking for a Disney movie. Like, even the colors and the cinematography were, like, dark. Mm -hmm. Like, you know? Every, like, it had very. I love the dark colors of it. Because, again, I'm a very visual person. I tend to look at yes. the cinematography a lot. That really. Mm -hmm. That's really what really gets me about the visual effects. That's what I really love. And um, performance of, of the original, they actually, and I feel like in the Disney one, they made it a little darker than the original. Um, it is a pretty faithful, I mean, it is pretty faithful to the original. I do like the flavor that Disney gives it. And it's pretty good because with the fairy tale movie, you can kind of do whatever you want as long as you stick to the original story. Because those stories are like just so old 
now you can like make like you can design the characters however you want you can kind of flip things around a bit there's a lot you can do with it now and the song agony is absolute perfection i don't know if you heard that one like when the princes were like <laughs> like ripping open their shirt <laughs> oh man that's the best part for me yeah of course it is <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and that's why like, I went to the woods. Yeah, there's a lot. In Disney, no matter if it's animation or live action, there's a lot of musicals. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, like, it, it's definitely their key, their bread and mm-hmm. butter musicals. Especially, like, there are times when they would take breaks from it, but then they would realize, you know what? That's what we're good at, so we're going to be doing that. And especially, like, there are even some movies they would bring their animated master composers into the movies a uh, good example is Alan Menken like he was he, like he put his contribution into many of the movies including like uh, The Little Mermaid Beauty and the Beast Aladdin and all those uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame and then like they would also bring him in for Enchanted hmm. and and like uh, and even I just realized another example is that um, like for Robert and Richard Sherman uh, the masters behind such songs for like uh, Sword in the Stone, the Jungle Book, they would also do the music for Mary Poppins. Mm. Mm. There's a, especially since you mentioned Alan Macon, he uh, also did Newsies. Oh yeah, Newsies. I know that is. That's actually a funny thing how Newsies just became popular. It was this 90s. 80s movie that everybody seems to have forgotten. 92. What? 92? 90s? Okay, this 90s movie that everybody seems to have forgotten. But then suddenly, like, fast forward two decades later, like, it, like there was a small cult following that grew larger and larger and larger, and then suddenly it just exploded to the point that now it has its own Broadway musical. That's wow. I think it's still playing on Broadway, actually. Probably, yeah. So yeah, like the popularity has gotten that. Yeah, big. I gained cult following on the home video. What is? What it's, is it? Um, <laughs> it's a musical about like um, the early. Somewhere in the early 1900s, probably 30s or 40s or something, about newspaper boys. Yeah, this oh. is uh, it's based on the New York City newsboys strike of 1899. Oh, 18. Okay, so early 1900s. Yeah, it's it's that uh, it's got a young Christian Bale who you may know as Batman. Yep. And he sings in it, so it's just like seeing a young Christian Bale singing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's just something I noticed with musicals. It's like it's a big thing for Disney to do that once in a while. It's their bread and butter, as Matt would say. Um, mm-hmm. Another thing that's oddly weird. I don't know why they would do this, but they would make films out of their theme park rides. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, that was a major that experiment. Was. Uh, like it started out as a small thing that would kind of make sense with uh, Tower of Terror. Which, um, say what you will, it, really, it's, it is stupid, it is cheesy, but I'll admit it's a guilty pleasure. I, lo- I love watching it every year during Halloween. But then they've started to get a little bit more serious. And, like, there, there are a lot of duds and, like, a lot of things that didn't work out. Case in point, the Country Bears and the Haunted Mansion. But then suddenly came Pirates and the Caribbean. And somehow... Pirates that was of the-, the Caribbean. Oh, my God. That's what I said. You said Pirates and the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean. You said and. Oh, whatever. Uh, anyways, like, uh, when Pirates of the Caribbean, that, when that got released, somehow it hit everything right to make this, act, like, this action-packed film while also simultaneously respecting the original source material. Wait, it was a theme park? It was a ride first? Oh, yeah. It was one of Walt Disney's last personal projects. You don't know this, but I remember the days before pirate, before the movies, before Jack Sparrow and everything. Beforehand, it was just a bunch of pirates singing "Yo Ho, a pirate's life" for me. <laughs> oh yeah, 
<laughs> that happened. So, later on, like that grew larger and larger down to the point that it just became the movies. Uh, the sequels that followed, like the second one, Dead Man's Chest, that was, you know, it was good. Everybody liked it. Uh, like, I not... Actually, I watched the first movie for research for this. Yeah. Uh, like, I liked the it. Sec- yeah. The, the second movie, not as good, but it definitely was, um, like, it was definitely enjoyable. Like, it was good. But then, like, the third one, that's when things really started to jump the shark when they tried to uh, bring out, like, try to have more characters, uh, like, trying to bring out, like, try to, uh, how can I put this? They, they, they try to feature more characters like Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner to be more prominent roles, but that seriously backfired. And then suddenly came freaking uh, the fourth movie, which nowadays they just did whatever they want. I remember watching a, a, a portion of it, and, like, I was just baffled because they were pretty much cop Like, it was pretty much Jack Sparrow copying, like, Jack Sparrow was chasing a darker, like, this shadowy Jack Sparrow. Suddenly, like, what the frick? Suddenly Pirates of the Caribbean became Super Mario Sunshine. That'd be interesting. <laughs> it's just, like suddenly, it just went crazy, and now we're gonna get another Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men, Dead Men Tell yep. No Tale, which so far I heard that Will Turner is coming back, but I am curious to see what they're gonna do with it. But I don't it's know. Set in space. It might like, get better. Like Pirates of the Caribbean, it used to be something simplistic. It used to be something fun, but nowadays it's just, it's just turned into Jack Sparrow madness. Yeah. I thought it was absolutely brilliant when I watched it. it was a, the first one's oh, yeah. usually the greatest one, as it goes down here with the sequels. But, um, that's, yeah, that's just a small little portion of live-action stuff when it comes to based on theme park rides. I mean, what's next? What what would you want to see from a Disney theme park to be turned into a movie like Space Mountain or something? Well, technically they are. Well, that could be the case. I mean, there are several... Of them that they have announced, there is going to be a Jungle Cruise movie starring yep. Dwayne the Rock Johnson, and just this week actually, they have announced they're going to make a legit Tower of Terror movie. Oh yeah, that's right. Again? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I can imagine. Like I, I honestly laugh when I heard about the Jungle Cruise movie because I can only think of Journey Two, when um, like it's going to be the same thing where like Dwayne the Rock Johnson is just just going to take his shirt off and it's going to have a 3d effect where he's going to deflect a berry out of his nipple what she yeah. does not know what you <laughs> look at the trailer for journey 2 Dwayne the rock johnson Come takes on. off his shirt and the kid throws a berry and his nipple deflects the berry onto like okay i'd like to see that wait <laughs> i'd like to see guys that. morgan's calling me what on my phone. What? What? Should, should I pick it up? Answer it. Dude, yes, it. answer it. Hello? Yeah? Yeah, actually. Hold on, give me a sec. You're on speaker. Yo. Hi. Dracula's castle by the sea. The Odeos were fine, but I killed them, I whined, but I found out the main course of me! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Happy Halloween. Ah. Uh. Morgan? Oh. Oh, it just turned. Oh! It's midnight. It's yeah, Halloween. It is, it oh, is it Halloween. Is. Happy Halloween. I was just wondering, I was like, what the fridge is this Wonderland lingo? Okay, oh my god, I like, I totally panicked for a second, I thought it was something no, bad. No, it was, I was, okay. that was the first thing, first time ever on Cinema Royale. Wow. I, wow. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, it is midnight Eastern Standard Time for those of you watching this podcast. <laughs> that was really interesting. Um, yeah, I totally forgot about those announced uh, theme park rides coming to film. Jung- Jungle Cruise, oh, yeah. I was kind of peaked about. It's like, 
I remember Jungle Cruise. That was a really good, interesting ride. They, they could. Well, it's like I always find it kind of weird because, like, it's how do Jungle you turn Cruise. a ride into a little boat, like, where you take a, a little boat ride and see a bunch well, of animals while a skipper makes bad. Right, things? but could you imagine what they do with it? I mean. Could be a nature dog. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was thinking the opposite. I think Disney could make it into like um, um, one of those like creature features kind of thing where a <laughs> Disney-fied creature feature where they have they're on the Jungle Cruise and then they're, they're stranded into on the river. They can have no way back, and these creatures come out of nowhere and attack them. <laughs> Which is too much for me because it was like Disney might not do that. It's like sticks on a plane. Yes. Disney edition. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe. Snakes on a boat. <laughs> Snakes on a boat. <laughs> I don't know about creature I don't... feature because, like, it's just the same. I know, I know. I was so. just trying because there's dangerous creatures in Africa, and I was just thinking, okay, they gotta do something because it can't be just a straight up. I don't know. Not us. No, never mind. Never mind. I'm not asking him. Cruises, like, African tour. Like, hey, here's the hippopotamus. Here's the crocodile. Here's the. I was just thinking, like, they could have just made something. I don't know. I'm spitballing. I'm brainstorming at this point, and I don't even know. Hush, child. But, uh, speaking of upcoming... How much time do I have, actually? Let me double check here. You have a time, I don't know. Oh, we've got plenty of time left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> plenty of time. Thought. Plenty of time. Let me, uh, let me go through what is coming up from Walt Disney Studios. Are we already up to that point? Yeah. Unless you want to fill in the gaps. Okay, oh. just so you know, it's like now that it's like midnight, now that it's so late at night, like I've sort of transformed and I can feel myself going crazy. <laughs> like when I stay up really, really late like this, I just start to lose myself, okay? Oh, so I'm going to start getting weird. <laughs> I thought you were about to say like, but I am transforming myself now. I am. Be this is no longer a sweater. I am becoming the Totoro. <laughs> I'm where, buddy. <laughs> I'm where, buddy. Need me? <laughs> if you guys need me, I'll be at the bus stop. <laughs> yes. Ian's my cat bus. Okay, okay, okay. That is a Walt Disney picture. There's a upcoming disaster drama film being released by Walt Disney. Not. Touchstone, but Walt Disney Pictures. It's called The Finest Hours, which is based on a book, and it's a true story of a rescue mission attempt in 1952 by the Coast Guard. I, I might have heard about that, actually. Those really freak me They're out. They're disaster dramas. Oh, yeah. They freak me out. Uh, the, 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 the live action. Ah, the live action Jungle Book, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's actually pretty interesting. interesting to see. I think we might have discussed it briefly. My mama, my parents, they used to show me that we used to watch that all the time when I was just a wee little bunny rabbit. And then, ah, and I really loved it. That and Jungle Book 2, we really liked those. So my mom and my parents, we'd like to find out about that. That would live be interesting. Action. They find it fascinating. Yeah, because it's actually like an yeah. a, a actual live action adaptation of the animated film well actually they're trying to the director is it yep, john, john favreau yep, or john, john, Le favreau. john favreau yeah like he's actually trying to mix both he'll make it both like part disney part book okay i get i could see that actually yeah because i was just thinking because they'd list they list like voice actors and or actors voicing characters so like this is like the direct uh if it were, like, a direct adaptation, you would have heard who would be, like, doing the songs and stuff. Oh, that's right. That's true. But, of course, mm -hmm. we only really got the teaser trailer, so you never know what kind of trailers we get from the movie. Uh, that's a good point. So, I mean, at the end of the teaser trailer, you hear Blue whistling. So, that could be, like, a hint of what could come. Um... Yeah, I'm kind of interested in seeing that actually, because you got big names like Christopher Walken in it, and then, um. <laughs> oh, yeah, C Christopher Walken is King Louie. That's gonna be interesting. <laughs> the kid. What about. Isn't it. What's her name? Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. As... Okay, I got something right for once. As a yeah. Scarlett Johansson as Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, because it's, it's. She's not gonna play no, it's just a... Well. It's, it's just the. It's gonna. S to her voice. Yeah. It's... That's, I know it. I noticed that right away when I heard the voice. I was like, that's Scarlett Johansson, goddammit. 
this. She's not. Yeah. She's not doing like, a voice. It's just her natural voice with us in it. Yeah, I don't know because you can't go, like you cannot go from Winnie the Pooh to Scarlett Johansson yeah, exactly. to like Black Widow. But like, wasn't the snake a guy? Yeah, no. it was the guy who voiced Winnie the Pooh. What? Scarlett. So so, so Scarlet now it's a, now it's a girl. female snake. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. I guess that is... I like that. My, like, my, like, feminist Tumblr mind is saying, well, yeah, hell yeah, right now. Um, <laughs> yes, and we are getting a sequel to Alice in Wonderland. Which that I don't get, which I honestly don't understand. Like, I saw the, like, I saw the posters of it, and it still Alice does make the sense. Now glass. they're gonna get a new, like, they're getting... A, it's like it's no longer attached to the book now they're getting mm -hmm. a new character and i think he's the new villain is sasha baron cohen playing time yes i've heard of that why I... are they doing this right now because it's, money yeah because first the first movie made a freaking oh, billion yeah. dollars it, it a... yeah i was listening to your old thing yeah. it was it was a cash cow for them it was like tim Byrne, you did a great job you make a sequel now it's actually the I believe it is the reason why we have all these that could, live action. I think that's, that was the start of the trend, actually. Yeah. What money? Got to have my money. Okay. <laughs> I am kind of. I'm trying to see here because I don't know if this could be distribute dis distribution, but it is BFG. Oh. The BFG, yes. Now that okay that is an official thing that I could say that this is, like, a Disney Dream it is. collaboration. It is. It's gonna be, yep. I just... It's gonna be the last... It's gonna be the last DreamWorks film to be associated with Disney before they move back to Universal. But, um... Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting take. And I heard rumors, apparently, that it could be possible they'll get Gene Wilder Yes. Back. They'll get Gene Wilder for it. I... God damn it, man. You're getting these confused. No, no, it's no, not. No, it's okay. not. It's not the BFG. Yeah. He, it's. Is it? Was it the BFG? No, no, no. Actually, the thing is, is that Steven Spielberg is interested to get Gene Wilder back in one of his stories that is like in one of his movies, and a lot of people are speculating it could be the ones based on Roll Dahl. So it could be the BFG or Ready Player yeah, One. Yeah, I think. It, but I think it's mostly Ready Player One, actually, to be honest. But you never know. We'll Spielberg see. just. Just give us a surprise, like, hello, he's in the BFG now. I don't know this. I don't know these people. It's. Have you ever seen Willy Wonka? Yeah. Okay, the guy who played Willy Wonka. His name is Gene Wilder. Which one? You talk it. Not Johnny Depp. Oh. The original. Oh, the guy in that meme. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, for those, <laughs> yeah, for younger guy. generations, Gene Wilder is Willy Wonka, and he's in <laughs> that meme. <laughs> I'm a millennial. Um, okay. You lose. Good day, sir. There's okay. I think I touched upon this last time, sort of, but there's a lot of Indian films on this list, like upcoming Disney Indian films, which is weird for this list. Ooh. Wait, what kind of Indian? Native no. American or like Indian? That, that hin <laughs> <laughs> you think Native Americans would be making movies? I'm talking about Disney India. You know, hi Hindu, Hinduism. Oh. Yeah, because we killed them all. <laughs> they're not in Native Americans are into making movies. They're into casinos. They're, they're, they're totally different. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. The re have you seen the for a million ways to die in the what? No, not that one. I mean, uh, the ridiculous six. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, I see what you mean, but that's not what I was talking about, because I look, I'm looking at these titles, and they're just, like, these are, like, made in, I don't know if they're going to come in the U.S. or not, but they're, like, Indian films, but the the other one that's coming out in 2017 is uh, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, that, like, that seems weird, like, I'll I have their, their, like, oh. I know what they're doing with the all-star cast, but, like, they'll have, like, the ones, the one I think that makes the most sense in terms of casting is Josh Gad as LeFou. Everyone else, like I find it weird. I even find it weird for Emma Watson to be Belle. Uh, Belle. 
I find really, that I, really like, everybody weird. loves Emma Watson, but it's like, I don't know, like, it's gotta be a hard transition to go from Hermione to Belle. And then, I like, don't... what? And then, like, one of the weirder ones, Ewan McGregor as Lumiere. That is gonna be weird. Um, yeah. Is he? Uh, Obi-Wan? Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you um, it should be interesting at least. I can't it's wait to see what they do with the ballroom. Scene. Oh. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be really cool. But, I, you know, but I'm gonna be honest. Like, I'm not gonna put my hopes really high on this one, because I know for a fact it's never gonna beat the animated version. Never. Well, with, with all these, are gonna be all, like, comparisons to the original. Um. Okay. Totally off, but with saying... What I can't wait to see what they'll do with the ballroom. I don't know how, but I had a great idea. I'll tell you afterwards. Well, it's, well, it, it's easy to recreate. Oh, yeah. You just need to... Yeah, you get a good crane shot, and then, like, you just see... Yeah. Yeah, you know. Really pretty. Just... Yeah, you get that camera working. So, so pretty. And you get the cinematography to be all crisp and, like, beautiful. You just imagine looking at that thing, and it's like... Oh, oh man. So, so pretty. pretty. Still, it ain't gonna be. It ain't gonna be the animated one. And like mm -hmm. you, s that the animated one is tainted pants worthy. <laughs> like Matt said, there was gonna be an upcoming Pirates of the Caribbean film coming out. Oh, actually, Mike. I think you just skipped one. Uh, you skipped one, actually. That's that's a really interesting one that we could what discuss. In 2016, not only there's going to be a Alice in Wonderland reboot, but there's also and a Jungle Book one. Oh, there's also going to be a Pit's Dragon reboot. <gasps> oh my yeah. god! I, totally, I, I was looking at the L's for live action. I didn't see the H for hybrid. Oh my god! This is. Okay. Oh my god! I can't wait for that actually, because the big. Really? The biggest thing right now, because it's not, because it's gonna be set in the '80s. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my. Oh my god. god. I'm, I'm trying to imagine what they're gonna do in the '80s, like with, with a dragon. I was like, oh my god. Mike, if you were somehow transported back to the '80s, you would just sit on the floor and cry. <laughs> yes, I made it to the past. Oh my god. <laughs> if you die. No, his dream. No, his dream would be finding Doc Brown and then use the DeLorean to go back to the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> Scott. That reminds me, Matt. Ask Devin about "quote unquote" the plan. The plan? What plan? The plan. I had a plan what? to go. <laughs> Something about going back in the DeLorean and getting my older self to fuck you. She told me about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She told me about that. Don't worry. She did. <laughs> and it's interesting enough because it's brilliant. Because there's some good names in here actually for the cast. I mean, you've got Robert Redford in here, which is a classy, uh, classic actor. Mm. Um, Carl Urban is going to be in here. He's been in Star Trek films recently. Um, Bryce Bryce Dallas Howard is going to be in this one too. Who you may know from Jurassic what? World. Um, I, I know Jurassic she's World. she's she's an upcoming actress. She hasn't done much in recent years. She's done Terminator Salvation, which we did a commentary on. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, she was the daughter of uh, Ron Howard, is yes. she? Yes, that's the other. Okay. So if you know if that. you know the director of Ron Howard, you know he's she's the daughter of Ron Howard, but. It's just... By the way, I, actually, I just need to say something about the uh, Peach yep. Dragon reboot. It's just that I don't... I, 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 maybe I'm not as enthusiastic about you guys because the one thing I fear the most is that they're going to take Pete's Dragon and then they'll turn it into How to Train Your Dragon. Well, that's that oh could be true because they're doing CGI animation and instead of hand-drawn. Yeah. And that's the thing, and especially, like, honestly, I cannot see how you can adapt How to Train Your Dragon, because for me, I always feel like Pete's Dragon is 
pretty much the, st the ultimate stereotype of a Disney film because the whimsy is at a level yeah. that's so huge. And, like, you got, like, these big random musical numbers. You got the goofy animated dragon. Right. Just everything about Like, I'm not saying it's bad. Mm -hmm. It's a good yeah. movie. But, my God, is it super it, cheesy. And, like, this is I the kind of movie that people... thought you hated cheesy. What? I thought you hated cheesy. Yeah, it depends. Okay, it depends. Okay. It depends on the type okay. of cheese. Good. Um, but here's the thing about this. It's, it will it, reinvent the core story of the Disney Family film. It will not be a musical. Yeah. Oh, and like boy. more serious tone and stuff like that. Still, still, I could just see Pete going, I, I still see Pete doing this. You know, I still see Pete doing this, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I think. Da, 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 I'm trying to see here, filming. Cause I, I, I just remembered Bryce being like, you know what? It's gonna be set in the '80s, and I, once I heard that, I just flipped out. It was like, there's not a lot of those films where they're set in the '80s. Recently, but um, but da, 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 da. I can't believe I forgot about Pete's Dragon. That's coming up next year, which could be interesting to right. see how that goes. Uh, then the, we got a lot. Okay, we got a lot of untitledness. So. Yeah. Well, recently they did announce that uh, a lot of movies that with an untitled title on them. So, like, we don't know. But we know that they have planned, like, they have announced a lot of a lot yeah, of live stuff. Yeah, live-action fairy tale for, film. Like, in terms of, like, live-action movies. But, like, like we got, how like, do you... I'm sorry, how do you announce an untitled movie I have no idea what it's going to be about? It's like, hey, we'll make you a movie in the future. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah, make... Hold on, like... <laughs> Just want to mention like the upcoming titles, like we know for sure there's gonna be Pinocchio. There's gonna be um, a Nine on Bald Mountain movie. There's gonna be Tim Burton's the Dumbo. Hell? There's gonna be a oh, Cruella God. movie written by the same person that did Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, let's see what oh. else. We got Beauty and the Beast. We got Genie, which I don't know how you're going to replace Robin oh, Williams. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, what else? A lot of these things you're saying, like, they're making me like, dear God, help uh -huh. us all. Oh, yeah, we're... <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, a Tim Burton's uh, Dumbo, on. that is gonna be so depressing. Oh, there they are. They're further down. There's gonna be I was gonna say, I had to scroll down for these, okay. There's gonna be, uh, Winnie the Pooh, which I know, which they actually announced the story for that one where Christopher Robin is 18 years old and he's going back in the hundred acre woods so it's basically ripping off alice in wonderland that's weird could be like the toy story 3 syndrome too <laughs> at first i was going to be like oh this sounds amazing then i was like oh yeah the, that's right i guess they're making a sequel to enchanted called disenchanted yeah they could be doing that um, too yeah for those who have seen the show Chippendales Rescue Rangers, there they announced they would do a live action version of that. Oh yeah, <laughs> because Alvin and the Chipmunks is making money, but now, uh, now the fourth movie wants to commit suicide. <laughs> yeah, to to compete against yeah. Star Wars: The Force Awakens. <laughs> yeah, because that. Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, you're a strong competitor for that. What could possibly go wrong? Um. It's just like when Disney decided to release Winnie the Pooh at the same time as uh, the last Harry Potter oh, movie. Oh god, yeah. Now it's their revenge. <laughs> you killed us off for Winnie the Pooh, now we have to get you back with Star Wars. <laughs> this means war. <laughs> um, Actually, no. It's not Star Wars. that like It was Fox who purposely moved Alvin and the Chipmunks to I know, Star Wars. It's their funeral, so... Um... <laughs> Like, what are you doing? There, there's gonna be a sequel to Oz the Green Powerful. They are. Yeah, they really? announced that. Yeah. Oh God, is Mila Kunis coming back? <laughs> yeah, she was pretty. Um, Corella. Did you mention you know Corella? Yeah, okay. I did. I mentioned Corella with the writer of Fifty okay. Shades of Tink? Green. Why? Tink. Oh yeah. Yeah, Tink. Oh yeah, there's gonna be. <gasps> Yeah, Tinkerbell Reese with Reese Witherspoon. Um, w said with Tim Burton. <laughs> All I can think of is like this Photoshop thing. It was like Re Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> Reese without her spoon. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> oh god. Um, yeah, I saw. I love those. We mentioned um, Mulan in the past. Yeah, Mulan. Uh, you Genius said we had the Pooh, po Pinocchio, Genies, Nine Ball, Mountain, the Sword in the Stone. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a Sword in the Stone, but I can imagine they're gonna do a more King Arthur thing than actually adapt Sword in the Stone. I think so. I think I read that actually. It's from. I would really like to see. I am such a sucker for medieval stuff. Oh yeah, staff. It's, it's, this remake actually has the writer from Game of Thrones, so it's it's gonna be really <gasps> good. Oh, oh my god, yes! Like the only thing they should keep in that King Arthur movie, it, like we need the animated Merlin to be in there. That would be badass. Um, and also have Mad Madam Mint. That would be great too. Uh, there's an upcoming Prince Charming live action film. Oh good no. <laughs> They need to drop that immediately. Thinking they about what happened it. with because Cinderella. the the writer of the movie, his only credential in terms of writing, is a sequel to Big Mama's House. Disney needs to drop that immediately. Need it's a to shame because I'm just like away from it. remembering what happened when I watched Cinderella and the prince reminded me of Lucas. It's like ah, home, um, yeah. You guys are right. <laughs> yes, and uh, they are making a new film of something wicked this way comes. Yes. Oh yeah. That's, that's that I want to see. That, that's yeah. You know. And then lastly, I, on this list, it was the Haunted Mansion remake. Oh yeah. Well, that I'm starting to doubt if it's ever going to happen because, like, more and more we're seeing Guillermo del Toro struggling with a lot of his movies, especially with. Um, Especially like right now with uh, Pacific Rim Two, even the last time he was mentioned in an interview, he says like nothing much would happen. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, upcoming live action films coming up, and who knows, we might see them. And who knows, we'll talk about them. Uh, overall, Disney yeah, we'll Disney has a mixture of everything. I mean, they're they're a big company now. They have everything in the world so far. They might grab more. They have Di they have Marvel. Lucas films, they're making their own live action films. They're doing animation. They're probably like top of the world right now, as we know it. They're pretty much they're pretty much their own brand. And although their movie, their live action films, they can mix with the kerfuffle of everyone else's. But definitely with their, at least with their animated films, they definitely have their own voice, and that is where their niche is. But even with their live act, like with their live action films, when they can hit, when they hit the mark well. They can definitely have, um, like, their own brand coming out. Like, even though there are a few unknowns that can mix with everyone else, but, like, but then when you get something like Pirates in the Caribbean or some, like, a mega hit like Alice in Wonderland, like, that's when we know that they have hit the mark and they have put their name into the business. <laughs> to think of all the different Charlie Brown does. Oh no wait, there's also... <laughs> <That's> insane. <laughs> yes. What made you think of that? Wait, what? No, I was like, what made you do that? Like... Because that is the end of the podcast, and next time, we're going to talk about films based on comic strips, and it's going to be sort of a tie-in with a pe Peanuts movie. These nuts. Oh boy. <laughs> That's going to be exciting. I know exactly what to talk about. I, I know you exactly you what probably to have... tackle. I know exactly what not to talk about. It's just nothing. I don't know what to talk about. I'll give you a little cheat sheet and you can pick and choose based on your interests. Oh boy. But yeah, we'll have... Hopefully everybody will be back. We'll see James back. Morgan back. 
And we'll have a guest. He's just going to stress me out big time. And it's only two weeks away, so we got plenty of time to... Only two weeks? Are you kidding? Buy weekly podcast, as I said before. Okay. If we did this weekly, it would be a mess. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> That's why I did bi weekly, because it's easier for people to take a break in between and come back all refreshed. Uh, Till next time, long live cinema. See you later, dudes. Bye bye. I've been told.